happen. Just like women get together and, and especially the older some of us cougars get. Some of the things we say about some young Oh my bartender. God. I've been exposed to groups of women having conversations without knowing <laughs> I was there. So, oh my God. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is Gina Trebar, co-founder and sales trainer of Pivot 10 Results and Carolina Improv. And Rachel Tipton, realtor, mom, and creator of The Closing Curve. And we are Women, Women Your Mother, your mother warned, warned You About, you about. the podcast that makes sales sexy again. We bring you a mashup of best business practices and life hacks. Everything from mom challenges to how to show value in a sales conversation while wearing the best shade of lipstick. Well, let's 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 first say hi to Keith. How about that? Hi, Keith. Hello, Rachel. Hi, hey, Keith. Gina. You guys already said hello to me in the intro, though. <laughs> well, we're saying hi to you again because we love you so much. So we just we wanted to say hi to you again. Hello. Okay. Thank thank you for appeasing us. You're welcome. Um, and I know this is the show that loves ca- men. This is the show that loves men, and so when we when we make mistakes, don't call us names like the B word. That's what we're talking about today, Keith. Are we allowed to and actually Rachel. say the B word, or can, are we going to allude to yeah. it as the B word? We can say bitch. Ah, I feel so much better, doesn't it? Yeah, we can say bitch because we can um, just mark the podcast explicit. Actually, we get more downloads when it's explicit. Fucking right. I'm serious. <laughs> People like potty mouths. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. And well, they were warned when they joined us. They were warned. They were warned. And I don't I don't think anybody has disappeared. Well, maybe people disappeared. We we don't know. So this the why I wanted to do this episode. Well, we've talked about doing it before, but it really came to my head to do it because you know, this is a newer podcast and we're getting different um, reviews and ratings. Please go out and do that, everybody. Go to iTunes, review and rate us. Shameless plug. So there's this guy on Twitter who follows me and he is over. I, I, like, I like to say he's across the pond because he's in London. And um, he's actually really, if Keith doesn't mind me saying this, this guy's really cute. Like he's a handsome sexy dude so like, why would i mind that i don't want you to be like insulted though we're like we're talking about men being good looking that could that could be a whole nother oh topic. i had a like a 20 minute conversation with my daughter last night about saying a guy was good looking and she was like you're getting married you can't say that and i was like yes i can say that you're allowed to say guys are good looking even when you are married it's like going to a museum and appreciating the artwork you're just not allowed to take it home I've never heard it put that way. I've heard about ordering off the menu. Like you can have an appetizer, but not the whole meal. Or you can look at the menu, but you can't order. I don't know. Something. Or, like I love museums. Or, or you can have an art collection. <laughs> <laughs> or you could have an art collection. I like that. Well, anyway, this guy is pretty cute. Um, I don't think men like to be called cute, but he's. I'm going to say he's hot. And so we started following each other. Uh, maybe on LinkedIn. I think on LinkedIn, we started following each other. Now we're following each other on Twitter. This is the guy who also got us, got our podcast on the Player FM because he started bantering on Twitter that he couldn't wait to listen to our podcast, but he was waiting for it to go to Player FM because that's what he uses to listen. And then Player FM picked up on that and they're like, we got you covered. We've, we've uploaded their podcast to Player FM. So I'm like, all right, so now what? I'm like, did you listen? Like, I'm like badgering him on Twitter, like... Did you listen to the episode? He's like, I'm going to listen on my way home. And then he listened and he said how much he loved it. And then he said his favorite part of it was the part where one of us, and I think it was you, Rachel, one of us said. It was definitely me because I say it all the time that. Say well, it. Would you like backstory on this phrase before I say it? And I'll create a little intrigue. Oh, however you want to talk about um, it. A being a, that I'm a bitch, but I'm a bitch that gets things done. So for those of you who haven't listened to episode one yet, that's at eight minutes and six seconds in. 
Well, really quick story, and then I'm, I want you to get back to your <laughs> How story. How does he know that? Because he's a detail How does guy. He know he's that? a detail guy. That was actually, I got called a bitch by a client once, and really quick aside story. Um, this was a real estate client, and I was selling her house, and she, um, and the deal fell apart. So I had actually had, it was around Christmas of last year, and I had a surgery, a minor surgery, probably one of the most painful experiences of my life. And immediately after that, I drove for an hour back down to her house to show the house, like limping and probably bleeding still from what they did to me. And um, I walked up to her and something happened with the buyers. They were already there and she wasn't gone and she called me a bitch. And I just like proceeded and I eventually sold her house. And later on, she um, she apologized for calling me a bitch. And I was like, that's okay, I'm a bitch. I'm the bitch that gets things done. <laughs> And that sold her house for more than she was asking, by the way. So, sorry, back to your story. So, Hottie from over across the pond says his favorite his favorite line in what everything he listened to was, "I'm a bitch, but I'm a bitch who gets things done." That was that's coming from a man, and that's what he really he got a kick out of that. I, I'm I want to know what Keith has to say about that. What's Keith's? What does what does Keith say? I'm results oriented, so go for it. <laughs> uh, get things done. You know, that was a great uh, that was a great part of that first podcast. You follow that up with calling yourself a ballsy broad. So there's another yeah. there's another term to get into right there. Oh yeah, you you've you've asked me about that phrase of of ballsy broad, and I'll get I'll get into that in a second. So, so, the, so, things- so the you know the bitch word's an interesting one. As a male, I can't get away with saying that very well ex- without it coming across as negative. But um, I think the way Rachel owns it is wonderful. I mean, it's it's you know, and as a guy, I can be a hard ass, and that's not necessarily viewed as a bad thing. Mm-hmm. But but that's kind of my point. I think. Um- I think maybe that guy was relieved to hear a woman say, I'm a bitch who gets things done because there's so so much sensitivity around, you know, what you're allowed to say or not say, especially from, a, I think, a male's point of view, especially everything going on with hashtag me too. Um, I think there's, there's discomfort on like, you know, is a man does a man even feel safe enough to laugh at the fact that we call ourselves a bitch or we call ourselves a broad? I interviewed this other guy on the Pivotal Leader. He's the who's the founder of Diamond Resorts International, kind of old school guy. And at some point in the interview, he said something like, "Honey, it's, I I can't remember it was honey, but he used one of those words, and then he like followed it up with a really quick apology. He's like." I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hope that doesn't upset you, offend you. I'm old school and I don't mean anything offensive by it, but he had to go through this kind of explanation of himself. And I sort of felt bad for him because I'm like, be who you are. I'm like, I'm not offended by it, but I guess a lot of women would be offended by it. I guess it depends on how people are using the word or using the phrase. I guess you have to bless you. Um, Rachel, that's okay. It's okay. Doug, Doug likes perfection. He'll get over it. You sneezed because you're, because oh, you're human. Uh, <laughs> Love you, Doug. So I don't know. I, I'm rambling. I mean, what do you guys? What do you guys think? Well, I think that bitch is a word that, like, it's one of those words that I think women can throw around. But like Keith mentioned, men are a little like. Now let's let's be honest. Like they use it about us behind our backs, but sometimes they're afraid to use it to our faces because it's just offensive, right? But like I know in a, in some groups of women that I've worked with in the past, we'd be like, "Hey, bitch! Hey, bitches!" You know, it's it's just it depends on how it's being used, and um, I think there's a lot of sensitive women out there that aren't able to own the fact that. Yeah, sometimes I am a bitch because sometimes I've learned that being a bit of a hard ass in business is necessary in my particular business for other male business people to take me seriously. And not that I'm being like a horrible bitch, but like a little bit, I've been called a hard ass and um, 
which probably behind my back was bitch, but it got me what I needed to get done for my client. And um, sometimes just being being strong in what you want and what you need and what you're asking for comes across as a bitch to people because they're just used to women being a little softer and meek and um, not asking for what they want. And maybe that's just my perception. So do you think some women will uh, move away from acting in a certain way, acting aggressively in certain situations in order to avoid that label uh, being yes. stuck to them, which can then kind of hinder a little bit of success possibly? Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with that statement. Oh. <laughs> we did that together. We did that. <laughs> I, thought, I heard together. that and I was like, did that echo? No, it's just Gina. Stereo. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, you know what? For the for the longest time, I was worried about people calling me a bitch, especially behind my back, and they still do. Now I'm just over it. So I, I think to to some extent, women do hold back because who who really wants to be called a bitch? Like it, it's hurtful. Um. And I think some people also throw it around because they're intimidated by someone getting something done. So they 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 resort to like name calling like she's such a bitch instead of like, man, she is tough. Two different two different words, same meaning, right? Sort of. I don't know. Well, I think that it depends on the level of security or insecurity of the person who's doing the name calling and the name receiving, I guess, too, because some, as I said before, a lot of women just, well, and it was me too. When I was in my twenties, I was super insecure. And even into my thirties, like really, I would just be so upset. Like you just said, Gina, about somebody calling me a bitch, like, Oh my God. But now, yeah, you know, sometimes I am a bitch and that's okay. Cause depending on, even if I'm really trying to do the right thing for especially in a sales situation, real estate sales. Like if I'm trying to do the right thing for my client who I have a fiduciary duty to, it may me make me look like a bitch to the other side. Um, even if I have the best intentions and I'm acting in with integrity and really trying to do right. So it doesn't really matter if somebody calls me a bitch cause that's just their perception. And when I'm a bitch, I pretty much own it. Um, but I know that the people who really, really know me and deeply care about me, actually, they know I can be a bitch too sometimes, but they know, <laughs> they know that's not really the entirety of who I am. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good point. You know, um, my theater team at Carolina Improv, they refer to me as the bear, also known as Mama Bear. Um, Actually, I had to take care of a mama. I had to be a mama bear this morning with a situation that come up. So I'm like the mama, but they also refer to me as the bear. Like, oh God, don't poke the bear. Right. So it's their it's their way of calling me a bitch without saying it because they know what things trigger me or make me tick. I think sometimes they appreciate and respect it. Sometimes they hate it and dread it. But they know I'm going to get things done. Mm-hmm. You Keith, know, have uh, you ever ha, have you ever called anyone a bitch, Keith? Yes, but I won't tell you about her. Um, <laughs> 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 no, that's not a, that's a term I don't use very much because, from a male perspective, it's a loaded term uh, coming from a male to a female. But I got to tell you the way, you know, your comment and the reason I know the exact time on that was because that's where I have a snip to, uh, to, to promote our podcast. It starts there. Um, but by you owning it and laying it out there, which I think is something um, to take away is you've kind of created a context for a conversation and you've kind of cleared the minefield a little bit because without you kind of putting that out there, then in conversation with you, um, maybe someone is a little bit more tentative in conversation. You've put it out there. You've accepted it. You've kind of cleared the minefield around all this PC. What do I have to be careful of when I talk to you um, issue? And so yeah, I, th- and I know, think it's powerful for you to put it out there. 
Thank you. And you know, there's another, I like the, the minefield terminology you use, Keith, because there's another minefield that men, I have witnessed men dancing around, and that is when dealing with a woman, I run into situations where the businessmen were, they, they had a hard time getting around the fact that I'm a beautiful woman. And they wanted to be a little bit obnoxious about it. So I like to just bring it right out in the open. And I'm not going to be personally, I'm not going to be offended if men are like, oh, she's a woman and she's hot and she's here she is in her pretty dress, whatever. I'm just going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm a hot chick. Yes. Now that we're past that, let's get down to business. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, Gina? Uh, 100%. Like, yeah. Okay. Now you're done looking at my boobs and my ass. Like, can we get to it? Yeah. Business. I mean, I, I, I told Keith a story about this one time when I went to uh, pitch a client uh, back in Chicago. It was, a, it was like our first really, this was in my first business and I was in my 20s and I had a marketing agency. I don't even know if Keith knows that. But anyway, I went to go pitch this restaurant ch- chain owner and the top button of my suit, this was in the day when I actually wore suits, uh, the button popped off. And my boobs were exposed and I had to go into this meeting. Yes. And, and I, I just made reference to it. I'm like, well, this is embarrassing. My button just popped off and my boobs are showing. So there it is. Like I put it out there in the meeting and I got the job. It was a huge contract. It was huge. But I make reference to my boobs being big all the time because... I did this presentation a few weeks ago uh, and uh, for this leadership group and the, and I brought a guy on on stage to like demonstrate the yes and exercise. He couldn't stop staring at my boobs the entire time. And I'm like, should I should I point it out to him that he's he can't make eye contact with me? And then I was like, no, I'm just amused by it. I want to see how long this goes on. And I just let him just let him do it. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, sometimes, and I, this conversation makes me think of, now, it, you may or may not know that my background is in performing. So I did a show, it was a really awesome show that I did at Caesars Atlantic City for a few months. And in those big theaters like that, they have all of these Teamsters, man, backstage, all these guys, oh, union yeah. guys, they're everywhere. And we're talking the show, I had like 32 costume changes a lot of which I had to do right there on the side of the stage. And there was a point where we're doing dress rehearsal and I turn and I look and they're like up in the top where the, in the rafters, in the rafters and they're all looking down at me. And I just turned and looked at them and I gave them a full frontal. And I was like, I was going to say, did you flash your tits? I didn't flash. I just stood there and I was like, have a good look. We're going to be here four months. I don't want to feel creeped out. Just take a look. This is what you get. There's really not a lot there. Are you done? All right, let's move on. I mean, they are small. Uh, they I'm are. Not, well, I'm not knocking them. But, <laughs> I'm not knocking them. They're I amazing. Mean. But you know what? The, <laughs> <laughs> well, and that brings us to, hold on, let me finish this story really quickly, and then I'll get to that <laughs> smallness bit. But those guys really respected me after that. They never were, they were not sleazy with me after that. They were, they actually respected me more that I wasn't offended by that. Because, I mean, let's face it, all men want to look at your boobs. Like, I mean, I can't or speak for the homosexual guys out there, but they might want to look anyways. For oh, them. no, 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 no. Like homosexual boobs. guys love boobs. Well, boobs are fun. They love boobs. Okay, so this brings me to they the next covet point. Them. Keith, fake or real, what's your thoughts? Like, not if mine are, but do you prefer, like, what are your thoughts on fake boobs? Uh, fake boobs are like permanent makeup. So... Um, you know, it's uh, they're right on some people and not on others. So it's an individual kind of thing. It's kind of like uh, some people wear too much eye makeup. Some people wear just the right amount. And some Good people answer. don't need it. Right. I don't need fake boobs. <laughs> well, but, and I wonder, I wonder, though, because so many women out there, and I've thought about it because, as Gina mentioned, I don't have a large breast. And I'm not knocking them. I'm no, not no. knocking them. I boobs. actually, well, shoot, man. The one great thing about my boobs is I can run long distances and they don't bounce around and it's pretty awesome. Exactly. So I, I yeah. get black eyes. So. <laughs> and the other thing is um, 
Well, I wonder sometimes, like I had a friend, speaking of, in the same show that I just mentioned, she worked with us for a long, long time, and she wanted to um, advance from, like there's a kind of a classic thing of being a dancer and then advancing in the show to being the singer, like the lead. And she went and got a pair of boobs, and after that, she was off to the races, man. And it was interesting. I just observed it going, interesting, like how that shifted in show business and I wonder if women make those choices in sales thinking that enhancing their physique like that is going to enhance their success in sales not um, because I want 100. that but it's just you know 100% yeah One, 100% um, I'm always looking at ways to to enhance now I gained I've lost weight I've gained weight I've lost weight I've gained weight it's always on my mind though because the thinner you are, it, it, it just, it, it is what it is, I think, in how people perceive you. And there's that whole body image episode that we did um, a few episodes back that people can listen to. But I, there is some perception initially, I think, on that. And it's always been on my mind of like, what different things can I do to enhance from Botox to eyelash extensions to, I mean, we can get in a whole go down a whole def- another um, avenue altogether with this. So somebody take note of that. Keith, take note. Of yes, that. ma'am. Uh, but, but I, <laughs> he's such a good Southern boy. I, I do think, I do think that women think, I mean, you, you have to think about that. You have to think about having everything packaged for, for selling purposes. What can, uh, Rachel, you were talking about standing there and, and flashing the uh, Teamsters. Um, one thing, <laughs> What, it's going to be a good sound. Yes. Bite. One thing, uh, kind of going back to your comment about bitch um, and your uh, how you're a bitch, but one of the things that really points out is owning who you are. And I think it's one of the things that stands in the way of a lot of people, not just women, but people in general, is owning who you are and just going with it. Yeah. And you know what I would love to point out about I do own who I am, but the biggest part of me that I own is that I am enormously flawed in a lot of ways and I feel like I can always improve and I think um, that's one thing that holds a lot of women back is thinking that that we have to be perfect and we have to look perfect and oh my god it's gonna make me cry that we have to like do everything perfect and be perfect right now and everybody has to think that we're perfect but the reality of it is that I think that maybe when I turned 40 um, I started figuring out how much I have to learn because I think from about 20 to 40, I thought I knew everything. <laughs> but um, I think that circles us back around to that article about the that you started talking about, Gina, where the fellow said, or the the, the what is the bloke? He said <laughs> that that you're invisible after 50 or something. I, I actually didn't yeah. read the article. Yeah. Fully transparent here. <laughs> No, no, that's okay. I mean, you could just read the title and be annoyed by yeah, it. Yeah, I read the. I think that's why I didn't read it because I read the title and I was like, "Oh fuck that." <laughs> yeah, and I will talk about that because I posted that in our Facebook group because I wanted to see some engagement on it and see what people had to say. Um, and I don't. I didn't want to turn it into a debate. I think I squashed that too because some. You know, I think there was a comment there about like, "That's how all of society is." I'm like, "It's not how all of society is. That's just how that douchebag was." Like in his comment. Um, but I, I think you hit on something too about the, the the combination of owning who you are, standing in who you are, but also realizing that it's okay to be imperfect. And in the world of comedy, self-deprecation is everything. So from a comedy perspective, it's okay for me to say, oh, I got big tits or I, I you know, I've gained weight. It's okay to self-deprecate because it makes other people comfortable that you've kind of identified the elephant in the room and that you're like, okay, I'm, I'm okay with talking about this. And now we've put it out there so you can be comfortable with it and we can all real, I think it creates more trust in any kind of conversation in, in a personal conversation or in a sales conversation. It's like, say what things are and just put it out there. This pulls up, uh, I was just thinking as you spoke about Jeffrey Gittimer and his book talking about him being bald and there's a whole section where he just uses that to his advantage and like, you know, you can and you, it it does like uh, going back to what I said about 
um, when I was working, you remember when I was trying to delve into the golf fitness um, in the oh, golf yeah, industry, I Gina? I remember that stint. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, oh boy, if golf isn't a man's world, like there's plenty of women out there that golf, but it is a man's world. And the golfers just loved me because I would just be like, all right, all right, boys. You know, I would just put it right out there. And like you said, the elephant in the room, like, yeah. you know, I know what all y'all are thinking. So go ahead and yeah. think it because I know you're already thinking it. So let's move on. <laughs> you know, when you talked about the Teamsters back back in the day when I worked um, in television production early on in my career in Chicago with Teamsters and IATSE guys, like all union guys, and very few women on set working. This gets back to the broad comment, too. I was in this environment of not just men, but like the guys, the shit, the, the union guys and the way they talked and the way they behaved. And if like some hot actress came on set to, you know, to shoot a commercial and they're all behind the scenes talking about her. I mean, these were things I was exposed to that I had to listen to. And I adapted to it. I don't even necessarily know if I was offended by it. It was kind of interesting to see this is what how they behave. Like, no offense, gentlemen, but behaving like little boys. This is where I learned the word spinner. And I'm going to leave it right there. And people can go research that. Is that, <laughs> is that a Wait. name that's okay to be used? <laughs> Are those, do you mean like the toy that the, my daughter uses? <laughs> No, you don't, do you? That's not what I mean. But these were the comments that I would hear on set like, ah, oh, she's a spinner. I was like, what the hell is that? What does that mean? I know that's like... <laughs> Keith is losing it. I'm serious. And some people might be offended by this episode, but this is the reality. And I, I don't, I'm about to get on a soapbox. When we get all worked up and hashtag me too, and don't get me wrong, I'm I'm not going, I'm not taking one side or the other, but <laughs> you guys are laughing too much. I just looked it up. The, That's <laughs> okay. Here's here's the point: is that these conversations happen, and I'm not advocating like boys will be boys, but these are conversations that happen amongst boys of like conversations like that. That's. That's how they talk. I'm not saying it's right. It just happens. Now, that doesn't mean it's okay to take that to another level and do something criminal. But it. But these conversations happen. Just like women get together and, and especially the older some of us cougars get, some of the things we say about some young... Oh, our, our my tender. God. I've been exposed to groups of women having conversations without knowing I was there. So, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> there, right? yes, I mean, we're just as guilty. Yes. I was so shocked. Talk about turning <laughs> right. red, right? Well, yes. I, oh, you should have been, you should have been out for us uh, with us like several, like it was a month or so ago. It was a bunch of women, we call ourselves the Blanches, and that was like we were, someone was, one of them was showing videos uh, from after a date with someone yes. not pictures but videos like that's a whole nother topic anyway we're derailing like <laughs> so back to the back to the question about <laughs> names so what names can be used and what names can't be used those kind of generic terms i i think again you need to know your audience so when it comes to names you need to to know your audience, both from the buyer and the seller side of it. So Rachel and I are good with putting it out there. Like we can be bitches. It's okay. Don't like come right out and go, Gina, you're a bitch. Cause that's going to really piss me off that. Right. But it's like, if we can joke about it, that's fine. I've been called abroad because that was like a term that my father that was old school used the word broad. So that's why I say I'm a ballsy broad. I'm a broad so is will, is Gina, you ignorant slut? Is that okay? Um, or was that if, Jane? If you've been, yeah, it's Jane. It's Jane. Um, it depends. You know, if we're, you know, if things are made in jest, 
But you have to also be careful too. Like I have some clients I'm not going to talk that way to, but there are some clients that I will talk that way to. You have to know who your audience is and and go from there in how you talk to them and what's allowable. You need permission, sort of. I like to allow, if I'm dealing with a male client, in fact, with a female client as well, because you can, I like to just let them show me how they view me by the what, what they call me. I've been called sweetie, honey, you know, mm-hmm. sweetheart, um, ma'am, miss, you know, depending on what term they use, just sometimes not really thinking, um, or even whether they use my first name or like Ms. Tipton, like you can tell a lot by who you're dealing with by how they address you. Or if they immediately are casually, casual about it, and they're like, Oh, you know, hey, sweetie, da da da. Then I also, I just know where they're coming from. That's the way I look at it. Like, okay, so this guy, if he calls me sweetie, then he's, you know, if he's an older person, older client or something, maybe he's just old school, like you mentioned. Or if I just try to use it as kind of a gauge, like personally, I don't really, it's hard to offend me unless you call me fat because I have a history of that insecurity in my life, but like, I think it's just sort of a, a meter of people. And also, if I'm not comfortable with it, I'm going to set a boundary. Be like, mm, don't call me that. Well, that that goes back to as, as women, we have to step up and set those boundaries and say what's appropriate and what's acceptable. If you don't want to be called any of those names, if you don't want to be called abroad, then you need to uh, you need to use your voice. And I think so many women do not use their voice. They just, I think this goes back to a question that Keith had about this. Does, does this hold women back because you feel, gosh, I, I, I have to take it. So I'm, you know, I got to be careful with what I say and I do. And I, I go back to like, be 100% who you are. And if you're feeling irritated by something, you have to speak up and say, not acceptable. Well, and, and another way to do that also, Gina, and this gets into the whole question about power questions, but when you say that's not a, when you say that's not acceptable, that puts you on the defense, another opportunity might be to ask, why would you call me that? Because then it changed the power mm-hmm. dynamics of the equation and puts the other person into a position where they have to consider why they're doing that. Interesting. Back to the power question thing. Very interesting. And a third way to handle a situation where, um, you know, we all choose our path in life. Some people think that they don't choose their path in life, but you always have control. And anybody who has read my book, The Gift of Wreckage, you can find it on Amazon. Um, I go into my first marriage where there's a domestic abuse situation. And I chose to get out of it. And, you know, you can, we can go down a whole nother rabbit hole of domestic abuse, but, um, cause a lot of women have a hard time getting safely out of that situation. But the mm-hmm. fact of the matter is if you don't like how someone's treating you, you do have the choice to walk away from it. And there's a million pathways in life to go. And, um, just got to recognize what you're willing to put up with. Cause if you stay, in any situation, a business conversation, a business relationship, personal relationship that you don't feel comfortable in or you don't speak up about or you don't make a change, then you are agreeing to it. Amen. 100%. And I, but I think a lot of women don't, or and men, don't have maybe the courage to speak up and say something and get out because there's a whole set of emotions of fear around what will happen if I do that. Yeah, or like even in a business, like in a sales conversation, what will happen if I tell them I don't want to do business with them? Mm-hmm. Oh, God, I'm going to starve. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I mean, the, you know, the, the worst, actually, the worst outcome is if you stay in a business relationship, just even in, in a sales uh, cycle with someone that you don't like or you don't get along with or like it just isn't a good fit. And it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Then it's just going to suck the whole time. Like it. It's just not going to be fun for anyone involved. Yeah, if, if it's if it's not if it's not comfortable, you you need to get out of it. You don't have to close a deal for the sake of closing a deal. Right. And I think some people feel that way. Um, I there was I've had past prospects that could be clients, and their just their general beliefs and attitudes about certain things in life and in the world were so not in alignment with who I am personally 
Now it's it's easier when you own your own business and you can make those choices. It's a little bit different if you work for someone and you have goals that you're required to hit. I think that's a whole nother topic of how do you deal with that? As a business owner, I don't have to take every client. I can say no. But I think as women, you still have to have a voice and go, you know what? I, if you can't make that decision, then you need to go to someone else and say what you're uncomfortable with. I don't know, Keith, what do you think? Because you've run organizations where th- things like this might come up. Have you had that happen? Well, you know, my mind was wandering into... Um, some people may not leave a situation because they don't realize places can be different from where they are. And that was one of the things that we experienced a lot in my prayer in my past company was um, people coming and, and it was, it was refreshing to be in because they were accepted regardless of those things. Um, so I had lost track of exactly what you were talking about. Cause I was reflecting on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I was just wondering if, if, you know, if you would have any advice for someone in a situation, because right now my my perspective is coming from as a business owner, what what would you advise an employee, let's say, that is on your sales team that is not comfortable with a conversation with someone, whether they're being called a bitch or they're well. Well, I know, think uh, you know, I'll go I'll go right back to the, what I mentioned to you before, and I think it I think what it is, and especially if you're a salesperson. You have to handle a lot of uncomfortable situations, even away from all this, because you're going to get rejected anyway, right? You're going to get rejected all the time. Mm-hmm. So you have to be tough-skinned as a salesperson, I believe. But I think in those situations, the first thing to do is just address it directly. Take ownership of the situation. If um, I was recently talking to a young lady I mentor, and she was in a situation, and, and she gave her name, and the guy asked some kind of demeaning question about her name, and, it, you know, um, and, you know, we talked about her responding as, so why would you ask me that question? And reflecting the question back to the other person and kind of putting them on the spot takes you out of it. It, it takes you out of the defensive and it puts them in a position where they have to explain what they're doing and it gives you the power. Um, and taking the power in that negative situation is important. Taking the power as a salesperson is important as well. So, you know, that would be my advice is don't run from it. Step into it, lean into it, and address it. And address it in a meaningful way, not from a, a fight, uh, he, said, she said, he said, she said, argument. But don't defend. This is, don't get defensive. Get offensive and ask the question, why did you do that? Mm-hmm. Rachel, any other thoughts on that? I love that. I think that's so good. <laughs> and I just, um, I just, I'm huge into audible books since I drive a lot. And I just, one of the books I finished listening to recently was um, "Never Split the Difference," and it was an FBI negotiator, and he talks about negotiation and all different situations. And, Great book. And he, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. And. Um, he what's the name what's the name of it again for our listeners? Never split the difference. Can't remember can't most, remember the author. Most hostages negotiators won't split the difference. Uh you know, you got ten people, give me five. Can we do that? <laughs> you kill five, I'll, I'll get five back. <laughs> right. It's a really powerful book, but he, he goes into kind of similar to what Keith just said, is just um there's different terms that he alludes to and or talks about and he just asks that question kind of like well, how am I supposed to answer that question? You're like, how am I supposed to do that? You want a million dollars tomorrow? How am I supposed to get you a million dollars tomorrow? And then it just keeps like feeding it back to them. It's a really fascinating book. And oh, that's interesting. All right, we'll have uh, Doug put that in the show notes so people can go look for that, for that book. I had posted, I had posted this, um, Twitter image of the guy saying my favorite quote so far. And I love it. He's so cute because he felt he spells, you know, he uses the English way of spelling things. Favorite with a U in it. Um, oh, I'm quirky like that. Sorry. He's really cute. So I'm just staring at his picture right now. But I posted his commentary of, you know, his favorite quote, I'm a bitch, but a bitch that gets things done. So I reposted this. I found it. I reposted it on my personal Facebook page and I asked 
hey ladies how do you feel about the b word or other words like broad dame chick girls ladies and there were um several responses um someone said i'm good with all of them except the c word and then someone else says yeah i'm with i'm with leslie because leslie said that and then then other women chimed in same as leslie so everybody was chiming in on the uh, c word thing and i I know that we've talked about this before. There's there's a book. Um, yeah, the yeah. There's a book. <laughs> there's a book by Regina Thomas Shower, referred to as Mama Gina. Mama Gina, and the book is called Pussy: A Reclamation Project. Mm-hmm. And I she, love that you just said pussy on, <laughs> on this podcast. Keith. We've we've hit all the words on this. We haven't show, said the c so word like, because that one really is like. The it is, the low. but it's she, the lowest of the low. she advocates the use of that word. It's a really interesting really? in the book to, I've got to read it. It's really interesting. I've downloaded it to, so that the book is the, what is it? The, just look for pussy, but uh, <laughs> it pretty much pops up right away. If you, you better make sure you're searching oh in within God. audible just said, just or look like, for pussy. just not on a general Google search. If someone's just con- <laughs> Listed, like all of a sudden you just showed up in the middle of this podcast and you're like just look for pussy that's what Keith said put that on a t-shirt <laughs> be careful be careful if you search that snip, on snip that video. audio the official page. title of the book I believe is pussy a reclamation project yeah okay and so I, I bring it up don't just go looking for pussy yeah, look for the book. You got to be specific oh if you're God. looking for pussy. I'm Very. I'm more concerned. I'm more concerned about Keith's career than ours because ah, we can get care. away with this shit. Actually, you um, know what's the craziest? So let's talk about this for one second. So sometimes, okay. and this really goes back to the whole original thing of the conversation. Like, if you just let's talk about the elephant in the room. I mean, people they're so afraid of like addressing the issue, but you know, what's wrong with saying pussy? <laughs> you just Gosh, can't I say it in the still... right. You have to be careful with whom you are talking about it. And uh, I'm going to take a brief moment to make a public service <laughs> announcement. Welcome to Women Your Mother Warns You About, the podcast that makes sales sexy again. Yes. We're looking for sponsors, <laughs> sponsors who don't mind the word pussy or bitch. Anybody out there? <laughs> we could edit all this out. Oh, no, no leave it. Not. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, we want sponsors well, we want that are like sponsors. cutting edge. So that's about the closest thing that really underwear. Yes, we want panty sponsors, yeah. underwear and bras. And yeah, we support all anyway. female body parts. The reason why I brought up that book by Mama Gina is because oh. Keith had mentioned it to me, mentioned that she embraces the C word. So I'm I'm very intrigued to read the book and I'd love to get her on the show. That'll be the next goal is let's read the book and then let's get her on the show because I want to hear her point of view on that because the C word makes me uncomfortable. I'm not a big believer in embracing that word, so I'm curious to see why she embraces it. I don't know. Keith, did you read the book? Yes, I read the book. Do you have any perspective on why the C word's okay? Because anatomically, it's in- most it's one of the most um, accurate descriptions of the body part. Interesting. I don't even know what to say <laughs> to that. I don't either. Vagina isn't? Uh, let's talk. Uh. <laughs> All right, so um, getting time. It's getting time. Things all, things all run together in my mind. It's probably not a good discussion. So right, it's getting time to wrap up this episode. Um, Jesus, Lord, help us so, all. <laughs> so, so what other names? Just if you don't mind, real quick, can I use douche? Yeah. Can I use? Um, what else can I use? Douche is more use? like a term for a man. It's isn't like it? a guy. I mean, even it's though like it's a, a, yeah, let's. What are some guy terms? What are guy terms for? Like, yeah, let's talk about what's okay to say about men. Like if you call someone a bitch, then the equivalent would be like 
calling somebody a dick or a jerk, right? It probably more like calling them a dick than a jerk. Yeah. I think yeah. I think that yeah. would be the closest thing. Yeah. Does a man really want to be called a dick in the work environment? No, probably it's probably one of those words that even guys won't use and own themselves. You know Or the other P word for dick. That's probably more acceptable, but yeah, you're right. Oh mm-hmm. really? Okay. But would you really call a guy that ever? Oh, right, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Rhymes with dick. Yeah. I don't know why I can't say the other one. What, prick? I said everything prick? else yeah. on this I episode. was sitting there going, yeah. why would you call the guy a penis? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> prick, prick, prick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, I mean, you know, we're going to we need to look at both sides of this. Like we've been talking about how much, you know, the the pow, you know, are you comfortable with the bitch word? And there's got to be words that men don't like to be called. Or do men care? Do men care? Keith, do men care? I, I think it's just it's just like women. Some men do and some men don't. And I think, you know, like Rachel was saying, as she um, turned 31, is that what you are? Um, it, things became, you know, a little bit more acceptable and you learn and it, you accept who you are. I don't really I don't really care what people call me. Okay. Well, the, the fact keep, of the matter keep is that in, mind. In, in success in business, like if you get to the point in, in business where you are successful, people are going to call you things anyway. Like you're going to have haters. In fact, I, yeah. I use that as a gauge that I'm yeah. probably doing something right. If people have something yeah. negative to say, then that means they probably wish they had some of the um, things going on that I had. So it's going to happen. People are going to call me a bitch. And that's okay. Yeah, and if they call me a yeah, name, I want to ask why, and then maybe I can learn something from it. But He's going to ask a power question. Yeah. <laughs> but I, you know what? That's my takeaway from this episode. Believe it or not, um, people, people don't know this about Keith and I. We have this ongoing um, love affair about questions, about power questions. Um, I think that was that's a really good takeaway to ask a power question like that, like, why would you say that about me or why would you refer to me that way? Like just from a learning perspective, it doesn't mean that I'm upset by it, but I'm curious as to what perception is because maybe there is something that I can tweak and make better. I'm always on, Mm -hmm. I'm always open to like doing something better. So my takeaway is I would ask, I would ask a, a power question. My takeaway is <laughs> good for you. I, I like how you guys are, are slowly getting along. <laughs> my my takeaway is um, is owning who you are, and I got that from what something that Keith said earlier in this in this recording that you know try owning who you are, and maybe maybe you are a bitch in some ways, and maybe that's okay, and maybe. Maybe it doesn't matter what people think, but we all have improvements that we can make to ourselves. And like I was just thinking back to that situation I described earlier where the woman called me a bitch. And you know what? She's probably right. Maybe because I had just come from surgery and it was ridiculous that I did that. And maybe whatever it was that I said to her that prompted her to call me that, you know, maybe I deserved it. And so you can always learn from a situation and mm-hmm. and improve. And, and the takeaway that I had it really coming from Rachel is create the context for the conversation. So Rachel gave us several examples of how she's creating the context, calling herself a bitch, flashing her tits. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but that, I mean, you've, you've, you've kind of in those situations, you basically not only owned it, yeah. but you set the context of it. Um, so I, I think that's real powerful as well. And that kind of takes questions out of other people's minds as to, okay, now what, what can I say or not say? And it, and it speeds the conversation along, you know, one of the, one of the, uh, Rachel, when you were talking about owning it, one of the questions that kind of came to my mind, probably, a, uh, maybe a discussion for a later podcast is owning it is about ownership and women weren't allowed to own things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. until fairly recently in human history. So how does that tie into that cultural impact tie into just the capa- or not the capability at all, but the adaptability of owning it? That's what Keith said. 
That's what Keith said. That's that's a, that's a deep topic to take into consideration for another episode because it's it's time to go. It's time to wrap up this episode. It's so sad. We have so much fun together. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> too much. All right. Fun. Well, our lovely Warners. It's time for us to wrap up this episode. Thanks for listening to Women Your Mother Warns You About. To connect with me, Gina Tremarco, directly or Pivot Ten Results or Carolina Improv, you can visit ginatremarco.com. And Keith, um, Keith, where can people reach out to you if you want them to? Oh, reach out. The easiest way to do is go to the podcast website and find the link to my LinkedIn there. Fantastic. And you can go to women, your mother warns you about dot com and you can find all of our all of our links on that website. And Rachel, best way to connect with you. Find me all over social media as Rachel on real estate or at the closing curve dot com. Awesome. Plus, you can find all of our social media links and free downloads on our website at women, your mother warns you about dot com. And please give us a rating and review on iTunes, please, please, please. Or wherever you get your podcasts. And remember, for the best relationships, you want to keep it real, raw, and relevant. And a little irreverence doesn't hurt either. Bye, Bye Warners. Warners. This really will get serious soon. Yeah, I don't, it, it doesn't have to. I don't think anybody wants it to be serious. This has been a presentation of the Seller Die Network. For more podcasts that you can take out into the street and turn into money, visit SellerDieNetwork.com.